As early as the Great War, the British Army experimented with mounting a mortar between the rear horns of a Mark IV tadpole. Placing a mortar on an armored vehicle has the advantages of the extra protection offered by the armor and the mobility of the platform. These vehicles became more common in the Cold War era and continue to be used by modern militaries. Among the many nations around the world developing their own mortar-carrying armored vehicles is Argentina. Using the development of the TAM and VCTP carried out by Thyssen Henschel, the Argentinians designed their own vehicle, the Vehículo de Combate Transporte Mortero, VCTM. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia video covering this Argentinian self-propelled mortar. If you like our videos, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell button. We have much more content coming. In the 1970s, Argentina set up an ambitious program to find an adequate replacement to its aging fleet of World War II vintage armored vehicles. After several previous programs, including the upgunning of its Shermans to the Repotenciado standard and purchasing French AMX-13s, including the licensed production of a small number of them, Argentina reached an agreement with the West German company Thyssen Henschel. Thyssen Henschel then proceeded to develop a tank, the TAM, and an infantry fighting vehicle slash armored personnel carrier, the VCTP, based on tried and tested components on a Marder 1 IFV chassis. Whilst the technology and many of the components would be produced in West Germany, assembly would take place in Argentina, along with the construction of armament, turrets, and hulls. In March 1980, with the objective of having a single company that would coordinate the whole program, the Tanque Argentino Mediano Sociedad del Estado was created. TAMSE was established as the main contractor of the TAM and VCTP, and was given the task of overseeing the final assembly, delivery and integration of the tanks into the army, trials, homogenization of the optics and armament and potential exports. TAMSE was given a 9,600 square meter covered assembly plant in Boulogne-sur-Mer, just outside Buenos Aires. This installation also housed two warehouses to stock vehicle components, offices, laboratories for quality control evaluation, engine test benches, a pit for trials, and a shooting range. Even at this early stage, it was decided to use these facilities and acquired technologies and know-how to develop a family of armored vehicles based on this common chassis and components, easing production and familiarity. The first of the Argentinian produced vehicles, soon to be known as the TAM family, was a mortar carrying vehicle, the VCTM. With the design dating from 1980, the VCTM is essentially a turretless VCTP, which carries a large 120mm mortar. It is not known exactly when the project began, however, it originated with an order from Jefatura. Tres del Comando del Ejército, the Army Headquarters. 2,000 blueprints were produced by the engineering department, apparently without foreign assistance. Nevertheless, Michael Scheibert, author of Schutzenpanzer Marder und seine Varianten, states that the VCTM was also a Thyssen-Henschel design. On the other hand, Sigal Fagliani, who adamantly defends this as the first TAM Argentinian project, gives the figure of 30 months between the production of the first prototype and the serial production vehicles. Unfortunately, most of the relevant authors do not provide dates. Externally, in appearance and design, the VCTM is very similar to the VCTP, and thus the Marder IFV. The frontal plate is at a pronounced 75 degree angle, and the sides and rear plates are positioned at 32 degrees. At the front of the tank, on each side are headlights. Behind these, also on each side, are wing mirrors. On each side of the front middle section of the hulls are a set of four Wegman 77mm smoke launchers. 
In the center of the vehicle is a large hatch for the mortar to fire through. This hatch consists of three sections, one opening to the front and two opening to the sides. The VCTM's armor is made of electrically welded nickel chromium molybdenum steel. The front plate is 50 mm thick and the sides and rear 35 mm. Additionally, the VCTM is equipped with an NBC protection system, allowing the crew to operate in a contaminated area for up to 8 hours, although they cannot fire without losing NBC protection. The NBC system feeds the main and driver's compartments with filtered air. The filters can absorb solid or gaseous elements from poisonous or radioactive substances. The vehicle is able to operate in very harsh temperatures, from as low as minus 35 degrees Celsius to as much as 42 degrees Celsius. There is also an automatic fire extinguishing system which can be triggered from the interior or exterior. All vehicles in the TAM family, though more often than not the VCTM, can carry an Israeli built RKM mine roller for mine clearing duties on a fitting placed on the front of the hull. Mortar vehicles are not often used in these duties, but Argentina seems to do so. However, if Argentina were ever to actually enter any real conflict, it may be unlikely that the VCTMs continue to carry out these duties. The VCTM carries a French 120mm brand AM50 mortar as its main armament, which is 1746mm long and weighs 242kg. It has a maximum elevation of 85 degrees, but is limited to 17 degrees of horizontal traverse, meaning that, to fire different directions, the VCTM has to turn. The aiming optic is an AOP-1. These figures are those given by Mazzarasa, while Sigal Fagliani produces different data. To start with, Sigal Fogliani denominates the mortar as LR and claims it is completely constructed by the Direccion General de Fabricaciones Militares. The dimensions and weight provided by Sigal Fogliani are a tube length of the mortar of 1.5 meters, weighing 44 kilograms, with an additional 22.5 kilograms for the, from the mount, 35.6 kilograms from the base plate, and 1.3 kilograms from the aiming optics. Sigal Fogliani also assesses that the mortar is on top of a rotating base which allows it to fire 360 degrees with an elevation between 45 and 80 degrees. Sigal Fogliani's claims are spurious as he designates the mortar wrongly and mentions that there are only two crew members operating the mortar. All photographic evidence points towards five mortar operators. Regardless, the AM-50 fires between 8 and 12 rounds a minute. A total of 49 rounds are carried inside the VCTM, behind the mortar, stored in 7x7 seven seven racks. There are four ammunition types. PEPALP, a long-range rocket-assisted high-explosive shell weighing 13.4 kg, with a range of 9,500 meters and an initial firing velocity of 240 meters per second. DM-44, a high explosive shell weighing 13 kilograms and limited to a 6,650 millimeter range. The M-62, a smoke round, also weighing 13 kilograms. And the M-62 ED, an illuminating shell, also weighing 13 kilograms. Secondary armament consists of a 7.62 millimeter FN Mag 6040 machine gun placed in a TPA-1 remote-controlled weapon station at the rear of the vehicle. The 7.62x51 NATO standard bullets the machine gun fires have a muzzle velocity of 840 meters per second and a firing range of around 1,200 meters. Additional weaponry for the crew includes their personal weapons, an 88.9mm Instalazza M65 rocket launcher and 9 hand grenades. The VCTM retained the suspension and running gear of the Marder 1, a torsion bar type suspension with six rubber tied paired road wheels and three return rollers on each side. The first, second, fifth, and sixth road wheel stations have hydraulic shock absorbers to absorb a significant part of the stress created by firing the mortar. The tracks are of a Vickers system 
each track consisting of 91 links with rubber tank treads. These can be substituted with snow cleats if required. The interior of the VCTM is divided into two main sections, with the frontal section being further subdivided into two subsections. The bigger of these subsections, occupying two thirds of the space, houses the engine, while the smaller one is for the driver and driving mechanisms to his left. There is a hatch above the driver's position and three episcopes, a hatch and a periscope for the vehicle's commander and the whole section of the frontal hull covering the engine can be opened for engine maintenance. The central area is open topped and houses the large mortar. This area is also occupied by four of the five mortar operators, with the other one, the aimer, positioned behind them with a hatch of his own. Behind the mortar are the ammunition racks. One of the mortar's operators is also in charge of operating the TPA-1 remote controlled weapon station and has two episcopes to assist in these duties. Communications are by means of VHF, SEL, SEM-180 and SEM-190 systems and an SEL, SEM-170 radio receptor. The engine on the VCTM is the MTU MB833KA500 diesel engine a six-cylinder rated at 720 horsepower at 2200 revolutions per minute and with a power to weight ratio of 24 horsepower per ton. The engine is kept cool by two ventilators at its rear, powered by a 33 horsepower engine of their own. The gearbox on the VCTM is the HSWL204 automatic planetary gearbox with torque converter and four forward four reverse gear ratios. The first three are epicyclic gear trains, also known as planetary gears, and the fourth is a clutch disc. The maximum road speed is 75 km per hour forwards and backwards. Off-road or cross-country speed is limited to 40 km per hour. The maximum range is limited to 590 km, but it can be increased by 350 km to 840 total with the addition of 200 liter fuel tanks. The fuel capacity inside the tank is a meager 650 litres, but with the addition of two 200 litre fuel tanks on the back of the tank, this can be extended to over 1000 litres. However, these are not usually added on the VCTM. Fuel tanks with other capacities have also been used. Among other performance indicators, the VCTM can overcome 60% gradients, 30% side slopes, 1 meter tall obstacles and 2.9 meter trenches. When it comes to fording, it is capable of fording 1.5 meter deep waters without preparation, increased to 2 meters with preparation. Not much is known about the service of the VCTMs, but it can be assumed that, as with the TAM and VCTP, they were used during several of the attempted coups that rocked Argentina in the late 1980s and early 90s the Carapintada military coups. In the last of this series of coups, on December 3, 1990, rebellious forces under Captain Gustavo Bray de Obeid took over a series of military installations, among them Tamse. The officer who took the factory, Colonel Jorge Alberto Romero Mundani, ordered 9 or 10 Tams in the factory to head to Buenos Aires. En route, the tanks ran over a group of civilians, killing five of them before heading off to Mercedes. Seeing that the attempted coup was heading for failure, Romero Mundani committed suicide, one of eight military casualties of the failed coup. Some sources, such as Chicalesi and Rivas, claim that Romero Mundani was actually commanding a VCTM. There is a slight divergence in the sources over the numbers built with Chicalesi and Rivas putting the number at 36 and Matarasa at 50. Notwithstanding, each of the mechanized infantry regiments equipped with VCTMs have them in groups of four to provide fire support to infantry units. In other mechanized infantry regiments without VCTMs, this duty is carried out by the M106 mortar carrier, which instead of the usual 107mm mortar has a 120mm one. Whilst experiencing a not-too-noteworthy career, 
the VCTM provided a valuable lesson to the Argentinian military authorities. And that was that they could apply the newly acquired technology to produce their own vehicles with a commonality of mechanisms and pieces for different roles. This not only supposed an easier retraining of crews and more common and faster production of replacement parts, but eliminated a reliance on foreign military hardware. However, as with other vehicles of the TAM family, the resources have not always been there to domestically sustain the production of these specialized vehicles. Thus vehicles have to be imported to make up the numbers. That's all for this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell button. We'll be releasing new videos on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit. If you use Discord, there's a link to our community server in the description. And if you would like to help us continue to develop and expand, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.